Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome to the workshop. I've been working on this all weekend and I'm putting together a presentation, a quick workshop for you guys, for all those course creators, all those software entrepreneurs, and all those bloggers on how you can turn your blog readers into paying customers. My name is Wilson Pang. I'm the co-founder of Yes Insights. It's a simple customer user feedback survey tool that allows you to gain more actionable feedback from your audience so you can take the guesswork out of knowing what your customers want or what your audience wants and kind of engage with them and turn them into a paying customers while nurturing them and building trust. Uh, you can check this out at yesinsights.com or follow me on Twitter at WilsonPang8. Well, let's get this thing started. So why does blogging work? Well, blogging is one of the best content marketing strategies. Everyone knows this and everyone should have a blog, whether you're just uh, a regular person looking to get into a space, you're looking to eventually turn into a business, promoting a product, or just getting things started, right? It's a great way to help you build your brand. Very, very uh, successful entrepreneurs and companies use blogging as a content marketing strategy, right? If you uh, look at Kissmetrics, Unbounce, or Groove, uh, all these famous companies, they all started off with blogging before they even finished building their software, before uh, they even start putting out a course or, or a paid product. They're building this list of audience. It allows you to build an early list of passionate followers and advocates so that people can share your blog post and you start building your brand. People know you for, for that expertise. And you can start collecting a list of potential customers as well as audience for you to engage with. So always, always start with a blog. You know, blog doesn't happen right away. You know, this growth strategy isn't something that will explode overnight. But if you're consistent with it and you keep doing it, it will bring you results and it will help you build your brand. So the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure you have very, very high quality content, right? One of the most important thing when it comes to content marketing and blogging is to be consistent. So how do I become consistent? How do I always come up with like best topics to write? Well, first of all, you have to set yourself a goal and you have to stick with that goal. So whether this goal is put a blog post out every day like Kissmetrics did. Uh, if you search anything related to tech content, it could be anything like, oh, how to um, get customer feedback or how to view my analytics. You will probably run into a post on Google that's related to Kissmetrics. That's because they start blogging every single day from the very beginning before they even pumped out the product. And they continue to do it on a daily basis so they can provide more and more educational materials to their customers as well as potential customers and new people that are searching up related content, right? So set yourself a goal. Uh, make sure you set a goal that's something that you can stick with. So you don't want to say, I'm a blog every single day and then run out of idea and hit a writer's block. That's that's terrible. So you want to write these long form contents that are at least maybe 1,500 words. Those are the type of blog posts that get shares that people will share on social media and give it to the friends and you know be all over Facebook, Snapchat, wherever, right? So set yourself a goal to write high quality content. Make sure the, the content is high quality. Like I said, Make sure it's at least 1,500 words. The longer, the better. And make sure it's very detailed and you're just not kind of like uh, making up stuff. You know what I mean? Um, have a story behind your content. So famous food bloggers, if you ever go to anybody that, that sells uh, a strong amount of recipe books or food cooking videos or anything like that, courses, you'll notice that they talk about the story a lot, how they lost weight, how they, they started eating healthy and uh, the things that happened to their life after they started blogging. So make sure you have a good story behind your content. You know, uh, going back to the example that I gave at first, Groove, they're a customer support platform, but their story was how to create a journey to uh, get to $100,000 in monthly recurring revenue, right? They they uh, documented their entire journey. They share what worked, what didn't work. And that captures a lot of audience, a lot of subscribers because it's a meaningful story and they're super transparent about it. You know, a lot of times you successfully attract a new visitor with a relevant topic that your readers love. But in order to get your audience to actually subscribe to their article, you have to publish content that makes people want to keep coming back to read. So don't use clickbait kind of uh, titles. Titles is very important when you're when you're going for high quality content, but you don't want 
people would just click on your article, kind of like BuzzFeed, and just skim through it and then never come back again, right? That way you're just pouring more and more and more money into promoting the content, but you're not really getting loyal subscribers or fans or people that love you, right? So uh, in the beginning, even if you're just getting 50 subscribers, that's still good. That's still 50 people that are dedicated and you want those 50 people to be high quality people and not just people that are clicking on it to skim through your article. So what are the different types of high quality content that actually work and gets people to share? How to guides. These are super, super effective articles. So actionable, um, step-by-step -step instructions on how something works, right? An example could be like, how do you get your first pay 10 paying customers? If you're writing a blog about uh, gardening, you might want to teach people how to buy the best soil. You know, how do I water my plants? Stuff like that. Uh, videos. Videos work very well because videos tend to convert at a higher rate than written content because it doesn't require a lot of time to watch the video and it's a lot more engaging. Imagine you go on YouTube to look for instructions on how to cook like a paleo diet or something like that and or how to bake a steak and you can just watch it in three to five minutes and you already know that you can go try it yourself. So videos work really well. Of course, you want a combination of everything, right? Written content, video content, audio content, eBooks, um, mag lead magnets like checklists those all work really well so a uh, list um, a list that provides information to other people that they can't find anywhere else like a list of 10 best recipes for steak or the 10 best uh, condiments to go with your steak all these stuff go really well because people are always attracted to lists and they provide a lot of value case studies work extremely well all our case studies that we put on yes insights get a lot of traffic because these work because people always want to know about what other people are thinking about your product or how how is it working for them so if you're a food blogger or a nutrition blogger you might want to show a case study of how somebody improved their life after eating a certain amount of food for a certain amount of days right so case studies work really well the second thing you need to do is that you have to engage and talk to your audience or your subscribers you know, you can be writing a new blog post every, every single day. You're trying very, very hard to promote it. And then you just pour more money into like Facebook ads or, or going on forums, going on content submission sites or like Pinterest or wherever. But you won't achieve maximum results if you don't actually talk to your customers. If you've been blogging for a while, then you probably already have a decent sized email list. This could be 50, it could be 100, it could be 1,000. But then think about it. If you start talking to these people and understanding what they want, you can actually provide a course for them in the near future and they're more and more happy to buy that course because you've already been asking them what are they trying to learn, etc. So what are some of the ways to engage with your customers and how to start talking to them, right? Provide educational uh, blog posts, right? So let's say this is a welcome email. This is an example of Help Scouts welcome email. And the first thing you receive from them is 15 extensional books on how to love your customers. They're a customer, um, like a kind of like a help desk platform. So people are always on their platform looking for more ways to engage more with the audience, how to delight their customers. And boom, here you go. There's 15 books that you can do. This is a list of books. So lists work really well. Another way to engage is talk to your customers. I can't emphasize the importance of talking to your audience and talking to your customers. Sending your audience your most recent update is a great way to attract people back to your blog because they see it, they find it helpful, they click on it. But just keeping your audience up to date just isn't enough, right? Because it's just like, oh, I'm just sending you more stuff. It's like sending you a postcard in the mail. You have to actually talk to them. You have to engage with them. And one of the hardest things about blogging is that most of the time you don't know what you should be writing. You don't know if your audience actually actually finds the, the information useful. Of course, a lot of times if you're getting a lot of comments, that's a great way to, to start to find out that, hey, you know, people are engaged with my blog. They're actually loving my articles. But a lot of times, what if you're not getting any comments? What if you're not getting that many website traffic? You don't know. So why don't you just ask the people that's already on your list or use like a website widget and start surveying them right away. Uh, what do you think about this article? You know, do you find it helpful? And then send them more relevant articles. That way you know what you're writing because writing takes a lot of time. We all know that sometimes it takes people days to craft an article. Uh, sometimes it takes a couple of hours, but it's still a lot of time. And you don't want to waste time writing something that people don't want to read, right? 
So one of the best ways to talk to your audience is using surveys. Uh, a great way to do this is by sending them a survey and asking them about their thoughts. A great example of this is this famous food blogger called A Sweet Pea Chef. And the, the founder of this company or this food blog is named Lacey. And she was spending so many resource and time just writing about topics that the readers actually did not want to read. But she didn't notice. So they were uh, they were writing all these articles, pumping out ebooks, checklists, recipes, um, you know, free stuff that they thought their users or readers wanted to read. But their readers will click on it, skim through it, and then leave the site, which resulted in a very high bounce rate. And that's not what you want. You want people to continue reading your other articles as well, related articles, and feel more engaged and start trusting you more. That's the only way you can start engaging with people and start selling them your product. You know, people don't buy stuff from people that they don't trust or they don't feel that they get any value out of, right? So what did Lacey do? Lacey decided to stop guessing and actually start talking to their customers and see what they really want. So the methods that she took to do this was creating surveys, right? You can create a simple survey with this insights, which is our product. And I'll show you more of that in detail uh, in the future slides. But, you know, just being able to ask your customers, hey, what do you actually want to read? What do you actually want to buy? What type of recipes are working for you? What do you like to cook? How's your daily life like when it comes to cooking? What is something that you're struggling with when it comes to cooking? And what kind of blog post can I pump out that will help you? That way she can actually create maybe like a paid course based on what the audience says. Um, one of the best ways to do this is by creating a one-click survey. So what is a one-click survey? A one-click survey is... Um, pretty much just a single open-ended question or it could be a closed-ended question like a yes or no and you can just embed it on any platform and it's super simple it's not one of those traditional long surveys I know I know I know surveys get a super bad rep you know you're eating dinner with your family or you're just checking your email and I don't know where you get this email hey can you take a minute to fill out the survey you click on it it goes to some survey monkey or Google Forms and it's a long survey Nobody wants to answer those, but one-click surveys embed directly in your email platform or your, your Gmail or whatever you're using, send out the email, and they can just click on a response. That way you can look at the data, you can look at everything in your dashboard and get results, right? So it feels like a natural part of your email content because it blends in with the, with the font and the format. Customers can respond painlessly with just one click. They just click on a response. No need to go through all the hassle of going to an external link and filling out some long form and then getting tired of it, right? You don't have to send extra emails asking these to take the survey. So these are three big advantages of using an inline email survey. And it's probably just the most scalable way to do it because you just paste in a survey after you create it into your email platform, send it, uh, add it to your automation, whatever you're using, MailChimp, Aweber, and you're good to go forever. It will be a part of your marketing funnel. And what, another great thing is that if you ask the right question, you can actually get people to recommend your product, even if they never even paid yet, or even if they're not engaged yet. So it's super powerful. Here's an example of a one-click survey. On the left, you see exactly how it looks like. So PicoChart is one of our customers. They use Yes Insights for uh, quite a different amount of things, including NPS survey. But uh, in this one, they're using it for um, a one-click survey. And the one-click survey, as I said, blends in with any platform. So this is the intercom platform that they're using to handle their customer support. And all they ask is, what do you use PicoChart most for? You know, for school and academic use, for personal stuff, for work or internship. Thanks for being awesome. And from this, you'll be so surprised at the amount of results that they get. They get 80% response rate. So 80% people click on a response. And then right afterwards, it gets lead to a custom landing page that they set up with Yes Insights. And they get a, where they can fill in additional comments. And they get 25 additional comments from that landing page. Super powerful, super high response rate much better than long traditional form surveys. And from this simple, simple question, they're able to figure out where to market the product to and where the majority of the people are coming from. So now they can start writing more content to maybe uh, the majority of the users are people that are using for personal stuff. Now they can write more content about maybe designers, you know, like that, that markets to designers because now they know and they know their roles. The next thing that you probably want to do to, to get more people engaged is by using drip emails. 
So a drip email campaign is a series of emails that your audience receives after they subscribe to your blog, right? Uh, these are probably autoresponders, depending on the platform, what, whatever you're using. A Weber calls an autoresponder. You can automate this with any email marketing platform you're using, whether that's ConvertKit, you know, Drip, A Weber, Mailchimp, Infusionsoft, Entreport, anything. And basically, what you do is that you send a series of educational Drip emails to your subscribers. These could be, be emails containing your top most resources articles, like Help Scout did. And your goal in these emails is to drive conversions, drive people to go back to your site and read more about your product and pretty much just build your brand, build your trust. Uh, you can also create a free course like, um, you know, I'll show you an example in, in the future slide, but free courses is a great way to educate. So, you know, back to the example, if you're creating like a gardening blog, you might want to create a free course on how to start growing your first plant. And it could go out as a seven day email course that, you know, that you send directly to the person's inbox with seven different lessons every single day. It gets the user engaged, it's super powerful. This was a, uh, an example right here, Podcast the Paradise. Johnny Dumas, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have heard of his podcast. He's called Entrepreneur on Fire, and he has a, a paid community and course called Pos Podcast of Paradise, where he teaches you how to monetize, set up at your very own podcast. He offers a free course that you can sign up directly at the site, and it comes out as a drip format. So every single day you receive an email from him with a video and a brief description of what you'll be learning from the course. So in his case, it will be setting up a podcast, you know, how, uh, what's the best equipment, how to set this up, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, what this does is that it provides excellent content. It drips out the user every single day, and then it starts building trust because people start checking the email every single day, and they're looking forward to a new lesson every single day. Now, they're by the time is at the end of the lesson, they're more than willing to pay for your product because you already provide them so many good free content that they'll be they'll be so happy to pay for a course that has even more valuable content, right? So this works because the email in the beginning will build up a great amount of trust. Most people won't buy your product right away, and that's a fact, but they will have a higher chance of purchasing after they learn about your values of your product. So uh, Johnny Dumas, at the last email might might ask you hey you know are you looking to join like a community where there's so many different podcasters and you can share your growth strategies you can share promotion strategies share the best tips and ask questions you know um after so many free content being able to promote a course is so much easier and that way you can get a paying customers easily Here's another version of a drip email. This is our very, very own onboarding email. So this is the first email we send to every person that signs up for our platform. You know, uh, this is my co-founder Lenny sending it and it goes like, hey, I'm Lenny, one of the co-founders here at Yes Insights and I want to thank you for signing up. We started Yes Insights with one simple idea to make surveys quick and painless for your customers to answer. You'll be delighted at the amount of responses that you'll get on your very first survey. If you have a second, we love to know the singles biggest question that keeps you awake at night and then we ask them a question that uh, allows us to deep dive into what their main problem is so we know what they're using our platform for what they're struggling with and we kind of get a better image like I said before a better image in our mind of what's our ideal audience and what should we be writing what what content should we be pushing out what uh, what articles should we be giving what lead magnets what checklists what lists should we be writing out and you'd be surprised like I said 60% of the people that view this email, boom, they click on response and they leave an additional comment for us to learn more about them. Actionable feedback is one of the best ways to grow your business and grow your blog and turn people into your paying customers. Another great thing is that you ask why they're not buying and why they're opting out. So I, I'm always on these um, email, email service provider Facebook groups and forums. And one of the biggest questions I always see pop up in every single one of these groups is, hey, somebody just signed up for my newsletter and then they unsubscribe right away. They opt out or somebody signed up for the free trial of my product and then they're not converting. How come? You know, stop guessing. Just stop guessing and talk to them. It's one of the best ways to, uh, to do it because when you start to understand them, you start to understand the user. You can create a better course. You can create a better product. You can create a better book for those specific type of people. Uh, users opt out of subscriptions all the time. Just talk to them and ask them why. Don't be afraid to do it. Just don't be afraid. 
the first thing you want to do is be able to segment all these users. So if you have a list of people, you probably want to be able to using MailChimp or Aweber, or whatever platform you're using, ConvertKit. Take all the users that are opting out and put them into a different list. You know, uh, you can email them directly one on one and ask them an open ended question, or you can use a simple what we call the nine work email trick. I wrote about about this in one of my blog posts, and it allows you to re engage with all your inactive email subscribers and it's such a powerful and basically it's just nine words uh, for example if you're if you're like um, a gardening blogger you would probably write are you still looking for gardening resources so it's simple nine words it doesn't have to be exactly nine words it could be eight words ten words are you looking for more email um, automation help you know anything just simple like that and then put a yes or no in a simple one click survey format and you'd be surprised at how many people open that email and think about you again, but like, oh yeah, I do need more gardening resource. And they'll click yes, then you can link them to uh, another blog article or show them another ebook that you just wrote or something like that, right? Another thing is that after you segment your list, you can email them personally, ask them, hey, you know, I'm just starting off this blog, I'm very passionate about this topic, but I really wanna know why you unsubscribed. Is there something that I did wrong? And it works, it, it creates an emotion and it's a psychology thing that it just works. The next strategy that you can use is retargeting. So what is retargeting? Re, uh, it's also called remarketing, and it enables you to create ads that essentially follow your visitors as they browse the web. Basically, you can use a tool like Perfect Audience Retargeter, Facebook Retargeting, Google AdWords Retargeting, and you can just set up retargeting effortlessly, right? So it's pretty much people who visit your website once and then what happens is that a cookie is dropped into their browser and each time they, they start navigating around on Facebook or another website, they start seeing your ad again. Um, some, uh, some companies like WP Curve, they only use retargeting as their advertising channel. So they don't run native Facebook ads, they don't run Twitter ads, they don't do Google AdWords, they don't promote posts, but everyone that visits their site will see their ad again and it kind of reminds them again that, hey, I exist, I'm still the gardening guy to go to, I'm still the gardening gardening resources. If you want a free course in the future, you know, come back to my blog and read some more. I'll provide you with more free content, right? You know, tests from Quick Sprouts found that when you remarket to your blog readers, you will get a click-through rate of 0.2%, and out of all those visitors, 3.58% will convert into customers. So retargeting is super powerful, and it helps you kind of remind people that, hey, I'm still here. Another great strategy to do it is by building a community. So build a community around your product, around your blog, and the community uh, allows you to engage with your readers, answer questions that they have, and one of the best ways to set up a community is probably using Facebook groups, Slack groups, forums, or just creating a membership site in general are all great community ideas. ConvertKit, the email marketing platform, does a really great job. They have a Facebook group, and if you ever go on a Facebook group, you'll notice that every couple hours, there's always somebody posting a new question. There's always a new potential customer that are looking to switch over from their current email service provider onto ConvertKit, and their staffs are on that Facebook group answering questions. You know, if you look at famous, famous bloggers, they all have a page, a Facebook group for people to share recipes and stuff like that. You know, another great example is a Jungle Scout, the Amazon research tool for people to make money selling on Amazon. They have a very great community that even uh, comes with events, meetups, local meetups, where people share advice about selling on Amazon. It's so powerful. Another one is Gumroad, uh, the, the platform that allows you to create courses. And they even have a community for, hey, launch your course in 30 days. This is how you do it. Everyone share your success stories. So really great way to engage with, with people is by building a community and building that trust and awareness. What else you can do? Offer giveaways, offer discounts. Everyone loves free stuff, don't you? I know I love free stuff. One of the best ways to engage with your readers is by offering a giveaway. You know, from doing a blog post that offers readers special discounts or a bundle deal, like how Groove did it in their small business stack tends to work really well. So what Groove did was that they uh, they created a small business stack where they gave a discount to all these top business tools and marketers are subscribing to the email list in exchange for discount codes. So they can, you know, or maybe a longer trial so that they can test out these small businesses and it works really, really well. 
and it's it's considered what I consider a double win. So a win-win situation because guess what? The customer or the subscriber or the potential customer is happy because they got a free discount, they got a free offer, and at the same time, you capture their email. You have a potential uh, customer that now you can start sending emails to and start talking to them about and getting more actionable feedback. Um, so giveaways work really, really well. Another powerful thing is that let's say you send a survey, right? Uh, you created a survey with Yes Insights. You start sending out to all your lists. Now, out of everybody that answers all the survey, you can thank them by just telling them, hey, thanks for the, for, for the survey. I'm pumping out a new course on gardening. Would you like a discount? Uh, I'm sure your friends in the gardening space will like it as well. Here's a discount code for you. You can set this up easily in Yes Insights with our auto auto follow up email. So um, use that use that feature and start doing giveaways, offer discounts. It's a win win situation. There's nothing for you to lose. Everyone's happy. What are some of the best questions to ask when it comes to sending surveys? Right. So. One that works really, really well for us, as I showed you an example from my onboarding email, is what's the single biggest problem that you're struggling with right now? This allows you to really just dig your, your customer's brain, dig your, your audience's brain, and figure out, hey, what kind of blog post can I write that will solve that problem? What kind of product can I create that will solve the majority of the people's problem? So it's very important. Which topic are you most looking forward to from this course? So you're, you're coming out with this course, whether it's a free course or a paid course, you want to know what people want to learn. You don't want to make a video, spend your time on it, and people don't want to know it. So you, you want to be able to do that. And remember, one of the best practices is actually providing the answers for them. And that's why one-click surveys are so important. That way they don't have to think. Um, or you can ask people what they don't want to see in a course, right? So that's another great way is a psychological effect. Uh, you ask them what they don't want to know what they actually want. What are you looking to accomplish from this product? Very similar to the second question. You will know exactly what type of materials you should be pumping out in the near future. You know How likely are you to recommend our product or service to a friend, right? This is what they call a net promoter score question. So you will probably want to uh, set the response as a number between 1 to 10 and 9 to And anyone that selects 9 to 10 are what they consider your promoters or your advocates because they are so happy with the product that they're willing to tell their friends about it. Then you can use the auto follow-up feature that I mentioned at first and then be like, oh, you know, we really thank you for, for being such an advocate. Here's a referral code that you can send to your friend or here's a blog post that you can show your friend or here's a free course that you can send to your friend. And then this is a very powerful question, this next one. How disappointed would you be if you can no longer use us? So you can use this in the blog version. You know, how disappointed would you be if my blog shut down today? That way you know exactly how often people are coming back to your blog post and what people actually think about it, right? The last one, where do you hear about us? This helps you identify the best marketing channel. Is it a friend that told you about it? Did you find us on Facebook? Did you, did you just search Google and found us? That means your SEO is working. Now you know the marketing strategy that you can double down on to boost your blog and get more people to subscribe and become your paying customer. So that was a quick workshop. Uh, make sure you check out Yes Insights. You can create one-click surveys like I mentioned above or the Net Promoter Score surveys. They embed directly in any email platform. Uh, we also have a website widget that allows you to uh, basically just a little slide up website widget that you can get feedback from visitors who haven't even subscribed to your list yet. So you can ask for those feedbacks. Very important. That way you can start getting actionable feedbacks and start talking to your customers. We integrate directly with Zapier, uh, Lead Pages, ConvertKit, MailChimp, Aweber, Intercom, Infusionsoft, Drip, you name it. We have an integration for it. Um, start talking to your customers right away and getting their feedbacks. Our product starts at $20 a month. Check out YesInsights.com. Again, my name is Wilson Pang. I'm the co-founder of Yes Insights. You can follow me on Twitter at WilsonPang8. If you have any questions at all or you just want tips or you want to see more use cases, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can reach out to me directly at WilsonYesInsights.com. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys learned something from this, and hopefully you can get people to start paying for your course and start turning your your product, your blog, into a very rewarding business that helps a lot of people. Thank you.